We're real life sisters, Kay and Chai, and we real life want to be your sisters too. Welcome to the family. No takesies, backsies. Now let's get on with the Kay and Chai show. Hey there. Welcome to the Kay and Chai show. This week, we're talking about our kids. We got a whole boatload of them. Actually, our gaggle <laughs> just grew by one. Little Tommy was just born. Bravo and congratulations, Kay. Thank you so much. Well, we do have quite the gaggle. If you include our parents, uh, between all of us now, we have a party of 11. But just between Shyla and I, we're a party of nine. <laughs> Which is a big gaggle indeed. Um, and three of those offspring belong to Chad and I. And we thought that maybe this week we could talk about uh, what we've learned in the lessons and the stories from each of our kids. We were recently talking with Joseph McClendon the third. Many of you know he's our business partner at the Neuroencoding Institute. And when we asked him, who are you learning from right now? He really took a moment to pause and reflect. And then he said, my biggest teacher is my son. Uh, He's got a 16-year-old son right now. And that was so profound that we've really been reflecting on what are the lessons from our kids. And so starting off very first with our oldest, uh, because Kay and I certainly like to imagine that our kids are together. Um, Our oldest are my twins, Wesley and Emery, who will turn 12 in September this year. Such a trip that they're turning 12 and hitting this age of Mm preteen, which is such an interesting transition. But the first additions to our family, which really had some of the greatest impact, I think, on us all. Yeah, my fertility journey, Chad and I's, was tough. Uh, We tried to get pregnant in the traditional way, had some issues with polycystic ovaries and um, ended up going to a fertility clinic and figured out the right formula for us and ultimately had three eggs come down and two of them um, became the twins and we were so excited to get them. In fact, when I was 11, I wrote in a diary, I want to have and will have twins someday. So it felt like it was really coming to fruition at age 25. Here I was pregnant with twins. um, And after four years of marriage, we were excited and ready to grow the family, double the family, in fact. Oh my goodness. Well, it was so fun for all of us. I was 17 at the time that Shiloh was pregnant and turned 18 right before the twins were born. And it was such an impactful moment in my life personally, Um, because it was the first time as the baby of the family that I ever had kids that I had just a little bit of responsibility for. (laughs) You had a lot of responsibility. You helped a lot. Um, I like to say early on, especially in our twins' first six years, we had a wonderful woman named Robin uh, as our nanny. Uh, Robin was a friend of mine from middle school and high school. got her child education um, degree and had always worked in nannying and childcare. And so she came along and really helped us be able to grow businesses while she came along. But we still needed a lot of help. And she was able to kind of teach you how to mechanically care for toddlers and babies. She taught all of us in our family um, (laughs) and was an amazing addition. But having her get to teach you and seeing you with my kids was something I know was really healing for me. And I loved uh, seeing that side of you. Oh, well, it was fulfilling for me as well and, and helped me to understand just how much goes into having kids and caring for kids and how much they need along the way in order to be shaped into like, you know, functioning humans. <laughs> <laughs> and functioning humans they are at this point. So Wesley and Emery are in middle school right now. They are definitely, as Kay said, coming into those preteen years. We've seen some mood swings, um, some hormones, some acne, some body odor, and some really fun new personality um, dimensions. Uh, just last year, Wesley, a year ago, Uh, in the springtime got obsessed with figuring out the Rubik's cube and by July he had solved it and now he can he's a cuber so he can cube (laughs) in less than one minute Um, but it's so fun and so we have lots of Rubik's cubes around but he loves to when he gets uh, interested in something really understand it and he he loves comics he loves being creative and and he loves solving Rubik's cubes. Ah well Wes is such a a gem and an addition to our family and Emery is uh, the flip side of that where I think Wes is very focused on this like intellectual and an internal Mm -hmm. experience. Emmy has this kind of external expression. Very gregarious for sure. Gregarious. Um, And she likes to be, she says she wants to be um, in theater and in acting. And so, you know, leaning in that direction. So yes, definitely very expressive. She's very mini me. She's one of us (laughs) for sure. She's motivated. She likes to get good grades. (laughs) She likes to achieve. She's definitely a leader. Um, And and we just adore having 
helping her and she's such a been such a big helper but i think my big lesson out of the twins as i reflect on you know them as teachers in my life is really the benefits of peer life companionship but i mean peer as in that p e r that peer to peer sense that seeing the two of them develop and get to grow together has created such an amazing i think security and confidence for them i can see how um, more socialized and well adjusted kids who come from families that at least have others that are close in age really matters. Well, having that village around, having mm -hmm. solid relationships is so important to the development of a young child and really uh, the development of any human being, period. It, having solid relationships in your life is, is so important. You know, I think, you know, as I reflect back on the twins, what my biggest lesson has been really is that village and the mm -hmm. importance, but understanding that there was this, this point where I had a, a part to play in the village. And when the village grew and seeing how much it it took to make it happen, um, that I, we could come together in a way that could support one another uh, and, and be this beautiful expression of a family that wasn't, um, that was more, to, more dimensional than I had anticipated growing up. Yeah, I'm so glad that that dimension got to be brought forward, but enough about the twins. Next up on the Kane Shine Show, you're going to get to meet my youngest, Miss Annadelle, coming up next. All right, let's talk about the sweetest girl in our pack, Shyla's youngest, Little Miss Annadelle. Annadelle Lila Morris. Well, the twins came along and that made two as company. She definitely made us three as a crowd. When you go from two to three, there's something all, it's like that rite of passage some parents say to others while well, you're taking on zone defense, right? You're going from man on man coverage to zone defense. So Annadelle put us squarely in the zone defense, um, making three truly a crowd, but it's a crowd we wouldn't trade for anything. And we are so glad that she came in and rounded out the Morris family kid pack because she brought forward, I think, one of the things, elements that we were missing, which was an element of sweetness, softness, and kindness. Ah, well, I do want to just take a quick moment to, uh, yes, you heard us right. Her name is Anna Dell mm -hmm, with, with a, a D. D. And Shai, I would love if you talk about the origin of her name, because I think it's just so beautiful. Oh, absolutely. So Wesley and Emery are both grandfather names, actually. Um, we just loved the name Emery for a girl, but they're both gran uh, grandfather names for Chad and I. So when it came to naming our third, we were like, it's got to be a family name. And we were rolling around with some of the other grandparents' names. And then I, we were at Easter, actually. And I asked Chad's mom, what was your mom's name? And she said, Annadelle. And it was like the clouds parted oh. and the light <laughs> shone down. And I was like, that is her name. And I love, love, love her name. Um, and it's so fitting for her. Uh, it's just, it's perfect. It's sweet. It's symmetrical. I love it. Yes. Well, for as soft and sweet as that beautiful name is, this girl is so soft and sweet. You know, many of you are likely know that there are some pretty big tensions happening right now in Russia and Ukraine. And Shai, right before we were recording, you told me Annadelle's answer to this problem I'm hoping you'll share and she, her, she's like mom why can't somebody just call up the people in Russia and tell them yo dude dropping bombs kills people stop that like why are you why are you doing that stop that if they could just know that it's killing people and it, it was funny her um teacher said and if we could only have a class of Anna Dels, she's so sweet she's so kind is she like that at home and we said yeah she is she's always the one who gets up and lets the dogs out she's always the one who will give up uh, uh some something for her brother or sister or share what she's eating or uh at, at, try to add value or serve in any way she loves being the assistant um, she even says, mom, I want to be your assistant when I grow up. And I'm like, great, because I really need one of those. Uh, and I love to have her around. Um, but she joined our family in 2013. So she'll be nine this year. Oh, well, right when Annadelle was born, uh, Danny and I actually moved to Southern California. And so I felt like I missed this first portion of her life in regards to being a baby. But when we moved back and started to get to know her a little bit more, and especially with the addition of Violet, and we'll talk about her in the next episode. But like, my daughter is obsessed with Annadelle, like kind of to an unhealthy degree, but Annadelle is so nice. She just takes it. <laughs> and she just loves on her and shares and lets her be the boss. Yep. <laughs> it's the sweetest thing ever and, and really loves to play with her. And then when she does come, come down to having to set some boundaries, it's always with the utmost love mm -hmm. and just the, the kindness that exudes from that little girl. I think we can all learn a thing or two from her. 
I know one of both of our favorite shared memories of Annadel is uh, in 2020, 18 days before Florida shut down for the pandemic, we found ourselves there for the uh, Disney Princess Half Marathon. And it's a whole weekend and there's kids races and all kinds of things. And we, I was running with Annadel, the kids one mile race. And it was a hot day and we were at the end of the race and I could tell that she wanted to stop and she was like, her body was genuinely tired, but she was pushing herself and she, she couldn't talk. She could only just like focus on running like, man, have we all been there, right? <laughs> and she starts doing this sound kind of, mm, 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 like this rhythmic little just grunting. vibrational grunting <laughs> to get to encourage herself. And it was like, it's embedded in my memory forever. And I know because it's so special to me, I've shared it with Kay so many times that her memory too, of just that, that vocal demonstration of commitment and what it sounds like to exert yourself and dedicate to something and just be committed to it, even when you've got to grunt your way through it. Well, we really see that continue to express in Anna Dell. And I think that's one of the, the other big lessons that we've learned from her is that when there's passion involved, that you can push yourself to some really new heights and new things that this last year, Anna Dell discovered the magic of gymnastics. And I have never seen a child so <laughs> committed to learning something and she has progressed so quickly. She really has. She is, she flips, she cartwheels. She's almost got the middle splits down. She really started loving gymnastics and began expressing in a gymnastics way ever since in her free time, she doesn't want to do iPad. She wants to do handstands and <laughs> cartwheels um, and love that about her. But my big lesson, of course, is that the kindness and love is the answer. And I'm so glad she joined the Morris family so that she could bring that to all of us um, and be that grounding reminder for us. Well, kindness, love, passion, and mom, you want to see my best handstand. <laughs> yeah. We love you, Anna Dell. We are so glad to have dedicated this episode to her. And next up, let's talk about little Violet. Hey family, we are love getting to talking about our family this week, and we want to invite you to come join us in an even more special way. Come join our cosmic kin and be part of our private Facebook group. It's where we share our most intimate family circles and memories and shares, and we love to learn from you and connect with you there. So please come join our Facebook group. It's called Everyday Motivation with Kay and Shai. If you're looking for a little bump, a little pep, and a little happiness on the daily, we would love to have you over there. So come join our family and enjoy the rest of this episode talking a little bit more about ours. All right. So the twins were two as company and Anna Dell's edition was three's a crowd. But when we added Violet, we realized that four is a party. Uh, and a party she is. Little Violet joined our troop and our tribe in 2018. And we're so glad to have had her on board for the last four and a half years. She is uh, quite the expressive little girl. She absolutely is. She is a doll. She is toe headed, gorgeous, blue eyes. So, so smart, intellectual, articulate, funny, in love with life, loves things her way. Um, she is an amazing young lady and I just love having her as part of the crew. In fact, just this morning, she said to me, mommy, I make funny jokes. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? You do make funny jokes, little girl. But yes, she is all of those things. She's definitely a bright little ray of sunshine. Um, and you know, her coming into the world, I think was a, a really cool way for us to kind of see this first round of cousins come mm -hmm. together right? We grew up with our cousins around all the time. So being able to see the cousin dynamic come in in a new way. And I know the, the twins and Annadelle have an older cousin on Chad's side of things. Um, but that like down the street mm -hmm. cousin that you see all the time, that's basically like another sibling. She joined our pack. She did join the pack. And, and I love seeing you join the pack of motherhood through having Violet. And obviously you were super around and the best aunt ever and involved with, with the first three, but number four really brought the, the children aspect into your family life and watching you turn into, uh, you know, the Salerno family and be able to have that dynamic was a beautiful dimension. Um, and, and it was amazing to see you step into motherhood in a really cool way. Well, as we talk about the biggest lessons that we've learned from our kids, you know, I think 
think with Violet, for me, you know, she really communicated to me energetically. This might sound a little woo-woo, but get woo with us. You guys are family, so this is what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. uh, she communicated to me, I felt energetically while I was pregnant with her, that she was of me and she was a part of me and a part of our family, but she really is her own person and that she didn't belong to me. She was of our family, but she belonged to the world. She belonged to the family. She belonged to the other people. She belongs to herself. Um, and that was a really big shift for me uh, because I always anticipated that I would be the most helicopter mom ever. And she really helped to shift me out of that even before she was born. I think it's maybe Jesus, but it's somewhere in the spiritual teachings I, that one of our great, you know, saviors has said of the world or in the world, but not of it. And mm -hmm. I think that that's kind of the energy she's brought forward. I'm in the family, but I'm not of it solely. I'm, I'm more than that. Um, and, and I bring that spiritual energy into it. And she, she's here for a mission, you know, like she's going to grow up and do some and be something and probably a lot of things, not just <laughs> one or two things. Um, and, and it's neat to get to see someone born into the world like that, who's on a mission and clearly on a mission, but still a four-year-old and yeah. still needs to eat her strawberries and do <laughs> her shower and dress up in five different princess outfits a day and, and do her show for you. Um, and it, it's just, it's neat to have that seat and see her. Uh, truly my big lesson from Violet is that expression piece. She is just so expressive with her words. She is crazy articulate and clear and, and smart um, and able to connect the dots really fast. It, fashion wise she is more like into it than any of the three morris kids she can match an outfit she can pick out shoes she cares about what she presents herself in she wants her hair styled in different certain ways um and then of course with singing and dancing with her body with her voice she loves to express and i just i embrace that and love that about her oh she is such a little bright like light of sunshine and uh, you know the uh five princess dresses before she gets dressed in the morning mm. is not a joke um and and, and you will always find her with some different uh, accessory going on. In fact, just today, she brushed her hair all by herself and put her headband in by herself. And she did a really good job. And it was the very first time. And it was just so cool to see this, this level of expression for her and mixing with her independence, starting to turn into this human being who I just, I can't wait to see what she does with her life um, because she is of our family. She's in our family, but she's not of it. <laughs> she belongs with us, but she doesn't belong to us. Well, next up, we get to talk about the newest addition. So we hope you'll tune in because you definitely want to hear who's the latest to the pack. Okay, fam, we're rounding out our, you know, two's company, three's a crowd, four's a party, but five, we're wrapping a bow on this little family because this is Kay here. I am done having kids. Shy, are you done having kids? Done, done, done. <laughs> so that means five is family. <laughs> yeah. Party of nine. Yeah. <laughs> Finn, as we like to say. And we are so glad to be welcoming little Thomas Daniel Salerno, who was born just over a week ago as we record this. It'll be a few weeks by the time you get to listen. But we're so glad he's here. He's healthy, nine pounds, yep. 22 inches. He was born on April. April 3rd, 2022. And we're so glad he's here. 4322. So glad to have our little guy. One baby. He's so sweet. Gosh. And it's been so fun to have him in. And, you know, the, the biggest difference, I think, between, I think, well, all of the birthing experiences up until this point was Tom was actually born at home. And that's so fun. Kay and I were actually born at home. So we, yeah, I love that you're bringing that full circle. And uh, for both of my pregnancies and all three of our kids, they were born via C-section and in the hospital and didn't have great experiences at either of the hospitals that I went to or with either of those um, kind of unfolding of events. But so, you know, you get the prize at the end and you're always happy with that. But the way you went into this birth with intention, uh, Kay, I think is really beautiful and worth sharing. Thank you. Well, this time around, uh, the last birth that I had with Violet was in the hospital environment. And it wasn't a terrible experience. I was glad to have had her. I was so grateful for the care of the professionals that were there. Um, but birthing at home was really important to me in this round uh, because I wanted the least amount of impact possible on myself and on the baby. Now, birth and labor is really impactful. That I'm not going to cuss no here because this is a clean <laughs> yeah. podcast, but that stuff 
hurt real bad. That was impact for show. But I wanted the aftercare to just be a little quieter than it was with the hospital environment. You know, at the hospital, you've got people coming in to check vitals and, and it's very kind of sterile environment and it's just very, very structured. Um, and some people are looking for that level of just, uh, I know I certainly was at the space that I was mentally when it was time for me to have kids. I could not wait to be in the hospital. I want, I even, he said, you can go home at four days or five days. I said five days. I wanted all five nights in the hospital. I wanted as much help as I could possibly get. But for you, that's not what you wanted. And it wasn't the, the way that you walked away from your first birth saying, if I can choose, and you do get to choose, then I want to do it differently. I think that's a really big lesson here. And one of the biggest lessons that kind of comes from little Tommy is that that that, that choice really matters. And that when you can take that birth choice into your own hands, that it really can have an impact on the outcome. You know, if a mother has the education and the understanding around both of the sides of that coin, and then can approach it in the way that's most empowering for her, she comes out of the other end, a happier mom. Shiloh was empowered in her decision to have a C-section. She had twins. I think one of them was breech. Um, so it medically makes sense to go forward in that way. And, and for me, I wanted something a little bit more fluid and low impact, if you will, when it came to delivering Thomas and doing it at home. But the outcome of a mother empowered by her choices it can lessen postpartum depression. It can help with bonding with your baby. And ultimately it brings that idea of trauma away from the birthing experience and empowers the mother instead. Yeah. It, like you said, it's already traumatic enough. And if you're in an environment where you don't feel supported for the vision that you have based on the health needs that are around you, then that does, that's not an empowering state. And so just, I think that's, it's beautiful that you brought that awareness to the process and that you are so committed because it is a commitment and it mm -hmm. is, so, you know, it's a, it's a decision and it's something you have to go into and, and know that that's what you're going into. Um, but when you did do that, you were 100% committed. You had your decision made. You followed the steps safely. Um, you had all of the, the people in place that needed to be in place, obviously working with a midwife and a doula and, you know, knowing that you're minutes away from a hospital should something go wrong was, was that environment that was for Tommy to come into. And we're so glad he did because he is just such a special addition to the family. Can't wait to see who he becomes, who he is, what he does and how he impacts our party of nine. In the last episode, you talked about, you know, Violet energetically told you that she was, you know, a kind of her own lady. What's been your energy signature from Thomas so far? Nothing. This kid gives me nothing in regards to, you know, what I should do or what I should feel, but I will say he's so cuddly. He's yeah. so loving. He's very uh, physical, but it's been interesting. I kind of had this like, well, what's going on? Because I mm -hmm. felt like I had so much of an energetic connection to Violet when she was in the womb. And I had a connection to Tom, obviously he's, he's my baby and he's there, but not that level of communication. And it's been interesting to see him come out and be much more physically oriented. He likes to cuddle. He loves to eat. He definitely, you know, likes hands and likes sensation when mm -hmm. Aunt Shy likes to give him his stretches and his yep. pets. Um, so it'll be really cool to see how that unfolds over time uh, as we have, a, a, I think, a love language of physical touch on our hands. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for getting to know our little crew, the five mini K and Shies out there <laughs> in the world, mini Chad and Danny's too. Um, we know that they are some of our greatest teachers and we look forward to continuing to learn from them and from you as the journey continues. Okay, next week on the Kay and Shy Show, we are so excited to get into a little book club. Yeah, yeah, you got to know our family. Now we want you to get to know our author family, those that we admire, the ones that have changed our lives, the ones that have shaped our souls and our characters. We can't wait to share with you next week about our book club favorites. See you there.